Okay, we'll make a start, I think. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Joby Jenkins from TTP Lab Tech in the UK, and um, I'm going to be giving a bit of a technology overview of an exciting new dispensing technology that we've, we've been developing. Um, talk about some of the applications um, and uh, where we're taking the product. And now I'm going to hand over to Melanie Leverage from GSK in the UK, who we've been working with as a beta partner on this project. And she's going to tell us a little more about the work that the guys in the lab have been doing there, um, particularly with a um, design of experiment um, application in mind. So a little bit about the history of the, the Dragonfly product and how the technology evolved. Um, back in 2013, we um, launched a product for protein crystallization optimization screening. Um, and we designed the dispensing technology from the ground up to, to suit that application. Um, that application requires a big range of viscosity, different viscosity liquids, very high viscosity liquids to be dispensed, typically into 96 well plates in, in um, ratio gradient um, combination screens. Um, and it, it suited that market very well. Um, and then we took the, the instrument to SLAS actually uh, that, later that year. And uh, there was a lot of interest from, from other areas and other markets. And that's really when the, the concept for Dragonfly Discovery was born. Um, and we've been working, evolving the technology and bringing it to where it is today. Um, for the drug discovery market. So the, the heart of the, the technology as in, in any liquid handling instrument is the, is the dispensing technology. Um, and what we, our philosophy, uh, those of you may know Mosquito, um, another liquid handling product that, that's been around for about 15 years is a, a disposable tip positive displacement technology. And Dragonfly um, mimics that in that it is a disposable positive displacement tip. Um, there's going to be one passed around that you'll get to see at some point during the talk. Um, the, the big difference with Dragonfly and, and any other technology out there with a disposable tip is that it's non-contact. So it's positive displacement, disposable and non-contact, and that, that's a unique combination. Um, the schematic on the screen that you see there um, shows how, how it operates pretty simply. We first we couple a piston rod that's part of the instrument to a plunger, um, then we raise the reservoir up to it, draw up an, um, an amount of liquid in the tip by straight aspiration. With the low dead volume in the reservoir, we then draw the, draw the tip out of the liquid and we can do dispensing from that. So non-contact dispensing into a, into a well plate. And the photo here you see, in, importantly, the positive displacement interface. So that's where the liquid is in direct contact with the piston that's moving that liquid and that, that defines what positive displacement is no air gap or system liquid, we drive down the piston rod and we eject liquid out of the tip. So a little video to show how it couples. So you see the piston rod driving down, couples to the piston, raise the reservoir, it draws up the correct amount of liquid into the tip for the dispensing that you programmed it to do and you'll see V bottom reservoir trough leaves a very low dead volume. So unlike most reagent dispense technologies that uh, pass liquid through uh, from a bottle and a valve that have quite a long run, uh, this is direct aspiration from a low dead volume trough. So that's the aspiration. Um, moving on to the dispense, this is really the, the, the key unique feature, as I said before, the, the non-contact dispensing from this positive displacement tip. The tip is um, if you've seen it as it comes around, it's pretty large. It's a 4 mil capacity tip, so it's, a, it's quite a big tip. Um, but we can actually get volumes down to 200 nanoliters um, with, this, with this technology. This is the original Dragonfly for the protein crystallization, where the minimum volume was half a microliter. We've now brought that down to 200 nanoliters for the asset development work. Um, and you see in the video on the left, the piston moves a short, sharp distance. That creates inertia in the liquid, which causes the drop to fire out. This is actually a one microliter drop of 70% glycerol. Being positive displacement, we're agnostic of liquid glass, so it doesn't matter if you're going to the stock, if you're going to the about 70% glycerol, 70% ethanol, you don't even need to tell the instrument or classify the liquid um, that you're pipetting. So what happened when we came, came to SLAS uh, the last couple of years and we brought Dragonfly along and started to talk to people, we had a, a lot of interest from assay development groups because the, the, the software and the ability to create these multifactorial experiments very easily um, was, was very similar to what assay development groups were doing. So we've basically been refining that to really gear it towards um, that, that application. 
The other one um, that came up a lot when we were talking to people was for HTS dispensing. And people really seem to want a, a reliable way of, of dispensing low volumes into high density plates um, for HTS. There's a lot of dispensers on the market and most of them are valve driven um, and people worry about um, potential contamination or clogging or blocking issues when running long HTS screens. So that was another area where people were saying that they thought this technology would be very applicable. The other thing that came out of these discussions and we started to engage beta partners at this point and asking them what their, what their pain points were and where they really felt the technology could help them and it's this transition between the two. So you're developing assays typically manually um, in 96 well plates and then moving them into HTS typically in 1536 well plates and that, that transition for a lot of people is, is painful and slow um, and the, the main reasons for that are different conditions in the well, physical properties of the well, the shape, the size, the surface area, um, and also different dispensing technologies. So if you're doing an um, assay development in 96, you're typically going to be using a manual pipette or a different sort of liquid handling robot than you are on your HTS. So that, that transition um, really came out as a, as a common theme that people struggled with and we thought we could help there. So we started talking to our, our customers and um, these have become, some of these have become our beta partners about their needs. Um, obviously we're going to have a, hear from Melanie later from GSK. They've been our closest working beta partner on this project. Um, and we've really tried to gather the requirements from a, from a broad range of, of companies and um, screening centres. And the vision that we came up with uh, at this point was to, that we felt we could really push this technology into um, the entire process of the workflow of the, the drug discovery from assay development through validation into HTS and even beyond that with hit to lead and lead up. And this, the instrument that we've designed, we've really geared it towards not just satisfying one or two of these parts, but doing the whole workflow across. And the way that we can do that is by using a common um, dispense technology within the head of the instrument and, and but changing some of the software features, changing some of the peripheral aspects to suit each of these um, areas of the workflow. As I mentioned before, just some of the specs, so 200 nanoliters, we've actually got about a 12 and a half nanoliter resolution um, up to the 4 mil. Um, we can go into, down into 1536 but equally distill dispense into 96 and 384 um, and we have independent channel control on the instrument from up to 10 heads. So all the heads can be dispensing at the same time, but they're independently controlled, so you can quickly build up these complex combination gradients within the plates. So in terms of assay development, we started to, to really look into this in our internal apps lab, as well as with our beta customers, and understand what, what are these variables, um, and there, there's lots. And what we quickly learned was that if we can do this in higher density plate format, we have a lot more real estate in the plate in which to um, vary these, the, these components and these variables and build up uh, a more efficient, a quicker way in, uh, to, to do the development of the assay. And this, this graphic here kind of shows an example of what you can do with Dragonfly very easily, very quickly, create all these multiple um, factorial experiments in a high density. This is a 1536-well plate. So this is, I think, graphically shows um, what, what the instrument does very nicely. So the other key thing, as well as the hardware, is the software, um, and, and the, we've spent a lot of time working with uh, the scientists in Melanie's group, particularly really understanding how an assay development scientist thinks, um, what they do, what they want the instrument to do, um, and, and work that out. And one of the key things that came out was the um, ability to synchronize uh, dispenses in a certain order. So if you have a kinetic assay, you want a certain component to go in at an exact time in a, an exact well after another one with an incubation time that needs to be handled by the instrument. Rather than have it on a robotic system with scheduling software, we built that into the, into the instrument. We can actually park the, the plate under a lidded station while it's on the deck, so you can just set up your run and leave it. Even if you've got you know, a couple of fairly long incubation steps, you can just let the instrument take care of that, all the synchronization and the scheduling. We can build up layers of dispensers, so you program different layers. Um, this is a fairly simple, simple assay with a couple of different gradients and a, and a constant and a couple of incubation steps. This is a, a typical um, assay development run that we've, we've done and it allows you to build up different layers, as many as you like, with the, with the software and the layer dispense. 
And the other thing that really came out, um, GSK in particular, and I think a lot of the other big pharma are starting to look into this, is design of experiment. Um, as you get into these more uh, dense plate formats, things become, um, statistical analysis tools become more applicable because you've got so many variables across um, so many wells and you can do a lot with it, but you need the software packages to drive that. So we've been working with um, GSK and the, um, the Jump software to export um, out of Jump into Dragonfly, create the dispense plate maps that you see on the screen here, um, and then put that data back into Jump so you can go through this iterative cycle for assay dev. So you can see just from this map alone, you really wouldn't want to be doing this um, manually um, or with Excel spreadsheets. So back to the hardware challenges, one of the biggest things was getting into 1536. If you've ever worked with uh, dispensing with disposable tips, there's not many of them that will go into 1536. Uh, particularly non-contact makes it even harder. The first challenge we had with the original Dragonfly tip was that the, the aperture was simply too big. Um, so we've worked on reducing that and this is the current um, tip for the Dragonfly Discovery. That goes nicely into 1536. You can see the evolution of the tip over time. This is the original one with a one millimeter bore. For the crystallization market, we then started prototyping um, with some, some finer nozzles uh, just glued on for, for prototyping work. And now this is the production tip that we run with today. The next big challenge is controlling how you dispense into a 1536 well. So if you see in this video here, if you don't control the rate carefully, you can actually get a bubble forming. Um, which we really didn't want to do because it would mean you then have to go and spin the plate down before the next edition, which would mean having it on a robotic system which we wanted to avoid. The other thing that causes a problem is splashing. If you drive the liquid in too fast, it comes straight back out again. So that's obviously not good either. So we worked um, for a long time refining the, the drive and controlling the drive, refining the firmware and the electronics to get a really nice, smooth, even fill rate from the tip. And this is a slow motion fill of eight microliters into a 1536 well. Um, and that's, that allows us to add multiple additions without splashing, without bubbles. So a picture of it in, in action, a couple of different components, yellow and blue for visual effect. And you can see the gradient of the blue increasing and the yellow decreasing that way. So this, this video really to give you an idea of the, the varying volumes and the speed of dispense. So because the diameter of the tip is so large, the distance the plunger has to move even to deliver different volumes is very is, is minimal. So dispensing, whether it be a low volume, a few, uh, few hundred nanoliters right up to microliters really doesn't take, a, take much extra time. So we can quickly build up low or, or high volume dispensers, which really takes advantage of the large dynamic range of the instrument. <coughs> So this is an example of a high volume. So this is a 384 well filling up to 65 microliters. And again, a, just a, a simple two-dimensional gradient. But you can see how quickly we can jet with that controlled jet, no bubbles, no splashing. And then likewise, in lower volume, directly into 1536. So this is eight microliters total volume, two different components being, being ratioed. So a little bit of data before I, before I hand back over to Melanie. Um, this was some work we did with a very early prototype with Novartis um, with, the, with the Dragonfly. Um, and really the a couple of key things that came out of this from us. One is the, the excellent CVs that we get across, across the range of, of dispensing. Um, and the other that they were particularly keen at looking at was head-to-head -head variability. It's something they felt was an issue with some of their other liquid handling uh, dispensers um, that they were really keen to eliminate because they didn't trust being able to dispense from multiple heads into the same plate. Um, so we looked at head, all the 10 different heads, all dispensing, got consistent CVs across that, but also consistent plate, uh, full plate CVs using all the heads. So that really shows that you can 
you can trust because it's a disposable tip and all the heads are independently controlled, you can actually trust them to deliver the same volume whichever head you're using. So you're not going to have to uh, ration yourself down to just using one head at a time to be um, happy about the CV. Um, a little bit of, of data and cell dis on particularly on cell dispensing. This was another area where we started to explore and Dragonfly really lends itself well. It's got a relatively large bore. The end of the tip is a 400 micron bore um, and that allows us to dispense cells and beads very nicely. As you can see a 4% CV um, and good cell viability is a, a really nice feature to have. So next What's what we're working on next? So the next stage of the process is the HTS, um, and for that, obviously, we need to deliver liquids to the tips um, in, a, in an automated fashion, so that it's not the, the manual walk up to a new um, dragonfly. So the key thing here is that the head, the technology in the head, the tip, the dispense range, the volume range, everything is identical um, to the assay development instrument. It's just the way we deliver the liquid to the well. So once you've developed your assay, you've got your optimal condition. You can put it into an HDS environment, run the same, same liquid dispenser, you don't have this potential bottleneck or transition issue going from the developed assay with a different technology into running it on an HCS. Um, and the other thing that we're working on now is uh, small integrated work cells for, for hit to lead and lead op work, small scale screens, um, also for assay, assay validation. So after you've um, developed an assay looking to validate it, you might want to run a small plate screen of 20 or 30 plates, we have a, a little robotic system with a dragonfly reader and something to um, add the compound 